Hello, today we're looking at the B3 distance learning questions. Again, two difficult questions that we are going to unpick and green pen. So hopefully you've had a good chance to have a go at these questions, whether that's in your book or you've printed the sheets. Um, and we're going to look at how we can answer those and get the maximum marks. So first question then, microorganisms cause infections. The human body has many ways of defending itself against microorganisms. Describe two ways the body prevents the entry of microorganisms. So we've got several things here uh, taken from the mark scheme. Uh, the acid in the stomach kills pathogens in food, possible one mark. Skin and scabs act as a barrier or produce antimicrobial secretions, that's the skin that does that. Second mark, I know there's only two marks but you might have written nose hair, uh, mucus, cilia, the goblet cells and the ciliated cells trap and remove dust and bacteria or you could have said pathogens, okay? So there's three possible answers there. You might have thought of others, and if they seem reasonable, then give yourselves the marks. Okay, this is quite topical at the moment. I think this is a, a nice topic to be doing in light of our current situation. It says here, in 2014, the Ebola virus killed almost 8,000 people in Africa. Drug companies have developed a new drug to treat Ebola. Explain what testing must be done before this new drug can be used to treat people. Okay, I said it's a nice question because it's quite topical um, about how we are creating uh, new drugs and vaccines or in, the, in those uh, uh, kind of stages of, treat of uh, production of those at the moment with COVID-19. So we can talk about lots of different points here. There's definitely more points than um, six marks worth. So you don't have to be fully inclusive of everything, but you do need to think about um, getting a wide variety to your question. So you don't just wanna be talking loads about the clinical trial and then don't talk about the preclinical trial. You don't wanna miss out talking about double blind. Okay, so let's go through. So we start off with the preclinical trial. This is the trial that doesn't involve humans, okay? It's the testing the drug on animals and it might be on human tissues, but those human tissues, tissues are not um, in the person so they're not going to cause that human any harm. They would be um, maybe some harvested tissue or um, tissue taken and then grown into stem cells um, to test in that way. Then we go on to the clinical trials. If you remember from watching the uh, drug trial gone wrong um, documentary um, slash dramatization, uh, we saw that they start treating or, or testing, should I say, on healthy volunteers. And this is purely to look at side effects. The reason that we don't test on um, the ill patient straight away is because if the drug is um, full of lots of side effects, it's gonna actually cause more harm than good to that ill patient. We don't want to make them even worse. So we go for healthy volunteers first. Um, then we test it on the Ebola patients at a low dosage, again, to check side effects. Once we've done that, um, we are looking for dosage. What's the minimum dosage we need to treat the patient and efficacy? That basically means, does it work? Does it do the job of curing the person of the um, disease that they've got? So does it get rid of the Ebola? Uh, we can talk about double blind trials, the fact that neither the patients or the doctors know who's got the drug and who's got the placebo. Remember the point of the placebo is to see um, a comparison. We use it as a control. Always think control, comparison. It's something to compare the results of the testing of the drug to. So we've got the control group, the placebo, who don't know that they've got the placebo. We've got the people who are taking the drug. They don't know they're taking the drug. That's the point of it being a double blind trial. And then we're deciding, uh, well, we're comparing those results, okay? And um, the reason why the doctors don't know is so that they don't bias the results, okay? So then we've already used the word placebo. The placebo is a fake drug to compare the results. And it's random allocation. We don't just say, right, all of these people over here are gonna have the placebo and these people are gonna have the drug. It is pure random allocation, who gets what, um, because there shouldn't be any bias. There shouldn't be anybody knowing who's got the drug and there shouldn't be anyone influencing who should get it and who shouldn't. 
okay and then following on from that when the results are in and the reports being written uh, we've got peer review this is where other scientists will review the work they will try to establish are the um, benefits greater than the risks uh, and to, to prevent false claims of people saying well it, it did this job when actually it didn't okay hopefully I've made that clear so lots and lots of key points in there going from preclinical to clinical to peer review um, usually about 11 years that whole process ish um, and how we use the double blind trial the three reasons we do the drug testing um, and the use of the placebo okay right let's look to our second question again like I said quite a topical question in 2014 there was an outbreak of Ebola virus disease EVD in Africa at the time of the outbreak there were no drugs to treat the disease and no vaccines to prevent infection after the outbreak began drug companies started to develop drugs and vaccines for EVD a drug has to be thoroughly tested and trialled before it is licensed for use. Testing, trialling and licensing new drugs usually take several years. The number of deaths from EVD continue to increase. The World Health Organisation, WHO, and we've heard lots about them recently, decided it was ethical to use unlicensed drugs. The WHO said unlicensed drugs could only be given to people who gave their permission. In other words, you can't just tell someone they have to take it also and you've also got to tell them um, you know that it is unlicensed also any results had to be shared with other researchers and drug companies some vaccines had shown positive results in animal testing but the vaccines had not been tested and trialed in humans the supplies of the vaccine were low at first the vaccines were only used for health workers evaluate that means pros and cons the use of unlicensed drugs and vaccines during the EVD outbreak. Now I've taken all of this directly from the Mark scheme, okay, so none of it is just purely my opinion, it is um, purely based on the Mark scheme so that we are giving um, an accurate response here, okay. You must remember, I've circled it there, to give your own conclusion. And now with your conclusion, you have to give a reason for it. So I might conclude at the end, um, I would say yes we can, um, it, it is a good idea to use the uh, vaccine because it might save some lives or I could say um, I don't think it's a good idea to use the vaccine because it could harm healthy people so I've given my reason why I think it should or shouldn't be used. There is no right or wrong so long as you back it up with reasoning so that's going to give you one mark at the end for your conclusion. So I'm just going to Actually, no, I think it's all right like that. So pros, might save some lives, could give you one mark. The vaccine could reduce the chance of future outbreaks because more people will be immune to it, so therefore it won't spread so quickly. Patients are made of, aware of the risk and have agreed to use the drug. Okay, so there's a lot of clarity there. Sharing results could speed up development of, of the drug or vaccine and mainly used for health workers risking their lives. Okay, so they're all the pros. Now I try and get maybe, because it's a six marker, maybe get three pros and three cons, and then hopefully your conclusion will get you that other mark. I know I'm building it up to seven, but the examiner might think that one of your answers or one of your points isn't that clear. So maybe try and go for three of each and your valid conclusion, and then you've covered yourself to get yourself your full six marks. Cons could be dangerous or the vaccine could harm a healthy person. It goes against drug development laws, uh, which are obviously set out for a reason. It might set a precedent precedent for other drug companies not to fully be tested. Okay, so it might be that other um, drugs in the future, they say, oh, well, they didn't test it properly then and it was okay, so we won't need to uh, test it properly and it should be okay. Um, so that, that wouldn't be um, a safe way forward, especially if it wasn't necessary. Um, and it could be un seen as unfair because it's not available to the African people. If you notice, they said earlier in the question, um, it's only used for the health workers. Okay, so three points from each and the conclusion should cover us quite nicely to getting our six marks. Hope you found that question interesting. I chose it deliberately 
to be a bit more topical and relevant for the time we're in. Uh, I hope I explained it all right and that you understand it better now than when you first went through it, okay? Um, I will be asking to see some of these soon, so make sure you try and keep up with them and um, you can submit them once we've done the B4 questions, okay? So I'm gonna do the B4 um, questions next week, or the week after, I think, um, and then we can look at all of those questions together. Hope you found that useful, thank you.